Your Alaska Matters quote of the day, mastery is a journey, not a destination. That's something I work on constantly. Mastery is a journey, not a destination. When I was just a young lad, I don't know, probably 16 years old, I wrote this next statement. And you're welcome to write it down. It's not trademarked. Not everything I do is trademarked and copywritten. So feel free to, um, to grab a hold of this and use it as your own. And to that end, I said, I was very into pottery at the time. I was a potter, still am through and through. Somewhere deep inside of me lives a potter that is uh, going to get out at some point. Nevertheless, it uh, piped down in there. And I said, the finished product is but a moment. It is the process that lasts a lifetime. That was profound. Think about that. 16 years old, thinking very deeply, very deeply. But that, that continues to uh, show up in my life. And I just, just randomly came across that this morning. Mastery is a journey, not a destination. And what a day to be remembering something like that. There's, there's tragedy around us in this state, in this country, it, around the globe. There's horrific things happening in all corners of the earth. But yet you and I, inside of ourselves, right where we sit today, have an opportunity to rejoice in the good things. There is gold dust in the air. Wherever you are, wherever you're listening to this, there is gold dust in the air, and all you need to do is breathe deep, and you can accomplish what it is you set out to do. You first have to know that you want to accomplish something, so I suggest you write it down, and then I suggest you work towards it. Read. Read as much as possible. That's my advice to young people. When, uh, In fact, not long ago, somebody asked me about the real estate business, and I said, hold on. I ran back to my office, and I grabbed a book, and I, and I told them, I said, read this book. I, l I had to emphasize, I love this book. <laughs> but I, I said, I want it back. But I gave it, I said, go read it. Go read it. You tell me what you think of the real estate business when you uh, get done with that book. Hey, have you thanked Senator Mark Begich lately? This out of the Washington, D.C. Uh, AP. Hiring is exploding in, the corner, in one corner of the United States economy where few want to be hired, though. It's temporary work. Yeah. Driving the tent are lingering uncertainties about the economy and employers' desire for more flexibility in matching their payrolls to their revenue. Some employers have also sought to sidestep the new health care rules that are providing uh, medical coverage for permanent workers. Last week, though, not to worry, the Obama administration delayed that provision for another year. And it's not just Obamacare. What this Congress is trying to do with health reform bill isn't something of an exercise of policy wonks and think tanks. When it comes right down to it, what we're trying to do is bring fairness and hope to the American people. But we have to pass the bill so that you can uh, find out what is in it away from the fog of the controversy. Oh, that's right. He had a lot of help in bringing us the Affordable Care Act, and uh, it's having, as many predicted, an adverse effect on the economy. I still like to, to, to think back to well, a couple of weeks ago we talked about that, where the brewer was back in Washington, D.C. last fall, the microbrewer from Kodiak, and he was uh, doing a little meet and greet with uh, Senator Begich. And I, and I reflected on that article in Inc. Magazine about brewers around the country, these small brewers that hire a lot of people, but really having to take a, a hard look at scaling back on their full-time employees simply from the standpoint of, well, if you've got to supply this Cadillac healthcare coverage, even the people that may not want or need it, uh, it, it may drive you out of business or profits down to such a point that uh, you may as well not be in business. And we all can't convert our businesses to nonprofits right? You can't all take nonprofit status. That just doesn't work if everybody's going nonprofit. And there are some businesses that go that route. Can't make it in the private sector, so they convert their business model to nonprofit. Fine, whatever. Maybe they've, uh, they've found another way to, uh, to make a buck, and, uh, but we can't all do that. So somebody's got to be rowing the boat. Speaking of which, is it time to take back your town? We've been talking about the war on you, and I don't care where you're listening to this. We have listeners that, that are from all over the country and all over the world. They may be in our direct footprint here in the Southern Peninsula or maybe online. AdventureAlaskaRadio.com is the website to listen to this back. But what kind of community do you want to live in? That's the theme of today's program. What kind of community do you live in and what kind of community do you want to live in? What's the purpose of a community anyway? Just impose rules on each other? 
snoop and report those who don't have a permit, aren't doing something in compliance with a thick code? Or is it to stand together and do more with less and protect one another, and at the same time respecting the individuality, individuality of you and me? There's a war on you, make no mistake about it. It's happening, and it's happening in your own backyard. Second half of the program, we'll be talking to Fred Sturman, I think. It, it's a it's a crapshoot at best. He may or may not be here. Uh, I'm hoping he will be because Fred Sturman, you'll recall, is the petitioner that brought you term limits to the Kenai Peninsula Borough Assembly. That is the very term limit ordinance that, that was adopted and voted for by a majority of the voters here in the, the, on the Kenai Peninsula that is looking to be overturned by the elected group that uh, this would definitely impact. And that would be the assembly themselves. So we'll talk to Fred, I hope, in the second half of the show. That'll be after the 1 o'clock news. Also, if you didn't know it, today in 1776, um, independence, the Declaration of Independence was let, read aloud to General George Washington's troops in New York. So this would have been on the, what is today, the 8th, 9th, 9th of July, the Declaration of Independence was read to General George Washington's troops in New York for the first time. Imagine you're sockless, your feet are black, you're, you're wounded, you've got bandages on your head, your buddy's arm's been blown off. You're fighting for liberty and independence. You're fighting for something that is right in front of you. And guess what? You're in your own country. You're in your own community. And you hear the Declaration of Independence for the first time? That's... That's powerful. We'll talk about that. Uh, also, do you know the law? We've got some questions here that uh, you may be asking illegally when, you, um, when you're when you hiring somebody. Anyway, also Alaska uh, Mind Bender. We'll have our Blackwater Bend Espresso Alaskan Mind Bender and much, much more on what my mom calls the greatest show on earth. Hey, what is ICLEI? Do you remember what ICLEI is? It's the International Council of Local Environmental Initiative. It's about local governance for sustainability. What is going on with this stutter today? Sustainability. Of course, that's a tough word to say. Um, it's all part of, welcome back to Alaska Matters, by the way. I'm Christopher Story, your host for Great Adventures in the Last Frontier. It's all part of our ongoing conversation about the war on you. And what kind of community do you want to live in? That's, that's the main question before us, I believe, right now. Is it time to take back your town? You fill in the blank what that town is, wherever it is. There is, a, there is an initiative at work on a global basis that is infiltrating and infecting at the local level. And this doesn't mean to say that your elected officials, that your unelected bureaucrats that are, are evil. No, this doesn't mean to say that they are working against uh, what you consider to be holy and patriotic. They might be, but in effect, it, it's not conscious, in my opinion. Some it is, some have an agenda. And in, in many ways, what really is happening is that they're being used. It's like having a really nice saw or a hammer or pick a tool in the toolbox. It's not the hammer's fault if you miss the nail, right? It's the person, the, the person using the implement that, that is doing either the construction or the destruction. And it depends on which side of the hammer you're using. Do you want to take something apart or do you want to build something? I think the framers of our country and the Constitution and the Declaration of the Indepe uh, Independence and so forth, I think, built something. And working at your local level right now, this is not hyperbole or melodrama either, is uh, the other side of that hammer. It's the claw side that would like to tear it apart and take it down. And again, it's, is it time to take back your town and to stand up and to speak up and to step up. And I, again, I'll reiterate what I said last week. To speak up is to step up. However, be aware that as of August 1, you have an opportunity here in Homer to run for city council. And it, it's as important as who's going to be your next senator, I believe, truly, is who is going to win the council race, who's going to win the assembly race, who's going to win the conversation pertaining to Mike Kennedy. Here's a letter to the editor uh, regarding Mike Kennedy. Mike Kennedy deserves support. Mark, Mike Kennedy has been a great neighbor and community member for a very long time. This comes to you from Sean Fate, a community member. He was a supporter of my local business, the Red Pepper Kitchen. I've always appreciated the skills he can bring to the table. Mike has helped others in countless ways. 
though many of the folks he has helped have passed or new, folk, new folks on boards and nonprofits may not be familiar with his deeds. The help was generous and many times selfless. And it goes on. Mike is one of those kind of uh, just staples of the community, and yet he's being railroaded by planning and zoning, by the, the city management, if you will. Walt Reedy is prosecuting and persecuting this man to the point of $1.86 million in zoning violations. Did you ever think you were going to live in a community in Alaska that would tolerate that? The people are not tolerating it, as a matter of fact. Three weeks in a row now, it's been in the, the, the local papers, and they're saying, enough, stop it. This doesn't make sense. And you know what it's going to take? It's going to take a whole lot more of those kinds of letters to the editor and to the manager and to the mayor and speak up and say, yes, Mayor Wyeth, we heard you. We hear you loud and clear. We are going to step up. And we're going to step up and lockstep support behind things like letting Mike alone. Mike Kennedy has cleaned up the lot as requested. Get off his back. It's not his fault. It's not my fault. It's not the taxpayer's fault that that you, the city, under the management of Walt Reedy, have spent $25,000 in attorney's fees. That's insanity. That's insanity. Here's another way you can step up and take back your town. And I wish you could hear me, and I really do hope you can hear me on this, no matter which side of, this, of the spectrum you find yourself on. It's the Bag Ban Repeal Initiative. It will be on the October 1 ballot. I'm asking you to consider, even if you... Count yourself among, I'm just going to use the word, a liberal environmentalist. Maybe you're a militant environmentalist at that. Uh, maybe you're just, it, this is your entire agenda is environmentalism, is keeping humans off of as much property as possible. Whatever it is, I'm asking you to consider your agenda will be better served when the individual, when rights, when individual human rights, inalienable rights are protected you are going to be freer to do more good than less. You're freer to do what it is you're put here to do when you are free, when you're liberated from the type of tyranny that decides the thickness of a bag at which point and which part of the store you can use and when and when not. And oh, by the way, the people making the laws and imposing on you don't abide by them themselves. And I'm talking about, yes, the poop bags at the beach. If they're not going to live by the very laws which, with which you must live, they're going to govern you in such a way that you are held to a different standard than they themselves hold their own con conduct. There is a problem. That is why we had a revolution to begin with. I'm asking you, no matter which side of it you're on, uh, I'm not pro-bag. This pains me to say this. I'm pro-choice. <laughs> From the standpoint of individualism, I am pro you choosing which bag you use in your business. Now, when it comes to litter, I'm hawkish on litter, uh, crowish, if you will. I hate litter. I despise it. Ever since uh, I can remember, we have picked up and regulated and tendered to our own tendered our own property, our own ditches in the vicinity of our homes and our property. I grew up respecting the land. I grew up respecting this great land. But I do not want six people to sit in a room and micromanage the extent with which I can use a bag. And it seems so stupid and so simple. And why we're still discussing it, I, for the life of me, I can't understand it. If I was on the council, here I go, if I were king, I would I'd say, you know what, the people have spoken. Let's just save Let's just save the money. The initiative is passed. Let's just, let's just kill this thing. Besides of which, the petitioners haven't even designed a way to enforce it. So it's a feckless law. It has no purpose. It sounds too good to oppose, and that's the only reason it exists today. And as of October 2nd, I hope and pray that it doesn't. Why? Because I want to see more bags in the ocean? Absolutely not. I want to see freedom and individuality celebrated. I want to see the collective put in its place, which is to serve the individual. That's what collectivism is about. That's why collectivism is so dangerous, is it doesn't recognize the individual. It says that communitarianism, it, you pick a, pick a socialism, Marxism, you pick an ism, and this is contrary to individualism. That's the one individualism that we should all acknowledge. That's, well, here's another example. This is uh, Ordinance 1307, 
brought to you by the city manager and public works director, an ordinance of the city of council of Homer, Alaska, amending 2013 operating budget by appropriating up to $42,450 from the water, so, excuse me, from the sewer water and fleet reserve fund for the purchase of a steamer truck. I got no problem with that. Do you? I don't know exactly what that's got to do with city water and sewer, but I'm just going to trust that it does and that that's the appropriate fund from which to get the money to replace this steamer truck. I appreciate it whenever I call up the city hall uh, and I'm able to get a, a, a culvert thought out in a timely manner. Very happy with that. No problem. Whereas Public Works has purchased a boiler unit as backup to the existing truck mounted boiler system unit with funds authorized in the 2013 operating budget. Here's where I'm getting to. Whereas climate change impacts are expected to increase the potential for winter rain and ice formation in districts. You, I got to take a drink of my Blackwater Bend Espresso. Climate change has infiltrated our budget conversation pertaining to a steamer truck. What is happening in your backyard, is it time to take back your town and put logic in its place? When we return, we'll do our Alaskan Mindbender brought to you by the Blackwater Bend Espresso. I'm Chris Story. Stay tuned to Alaska Matters. Don't forget, second half of the program brought to you by Bay Realty Incorporated, bayrealtyalaska.com. That'll be coming up the second half of the program. I want to thank Deborah Lysak and her crew. Good friends over there at Bay Realty for making this program possible and signing on board here to Alaska Matters. Uh, you're listening to Alaska Matters, by the way. Christopher Story, along with David Webb, engineering this broadcast back up at the mothership of KGTL. Second half of the show, as I was saying, Fred Sturman, I hope he'll be here. Fred's a character. Hard to, hard to put Fred in a box here, and he couldn't commit to being available at 1 o'clock, but he said he would do his best. The reason I would take a chance on that, normally I wouldn't, normally I say, well, we'll work out another time, is simply for the fact that it's too important right now. Does it matter when you vote? And we've seen this before. It was a conversation around bag, bag ban. I think it was bag. No, was, I'm sorry, non-prepared foods tax, just as idiotic. Non-prepared foods tax. You had voted twice to repeal and, uh, excuse me, to, to maintain the holiday on the non-prepared foods tax during the, um, you know, during the winter months and that shoulder season on either side. And the conversation went something like this. It wasn't a majority of the voters that wanted the holiday. It was a majority of the voters that voted. And you hear this a lot. And it almost sounds farcical. It almost sounds like, well, you can't be serious. I mean, really? It's just a majority of the voters have voted that voted? I mean, that's, yeah, that's how it goes. It's our job. It's your job to get as many people to the poll as possible. That's the system. That's why they give out the little stickers. I voted. Oh, yeah, it's election day. I'm going to go vote too. Tell people. Tell your coworkers. Have you voted? It's a civic duty. It's a responsibility of the citizenry to make sure you get out and vote. Now, if you do not vote, you're not able to vote, or you just don't care because it's not it's not one of the big year elections. Okay, that's fine. It's still the will of the people. The people that did show up to vote voted to suppress the non-prepared foods tax during that period of time. The same thing is true of the term limits, and that's why I find it just so baffling that. Anybody, anybody could say, well, it's not really what people wanted. It's time to get a little patriotic, folks. I know it's July 4th is over, but I don't care. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. That's beautiful. You don't need to pass that to find out what's in it. That makes sense, doesn't it? I love this country. This kind of music right here, this is what I need for the moment. I don't know what you need. I'm a 
majority of the voters that voted that voted? That's the will of the people. Term limits? Oh, they're all really well, I'm not going to pay attention. Time to take back your town, folks. By that, I mean your country. And through it, prosperity globally. We've done it before. We can do it again. Alaskan Mindbender brought to you by Blackwater Bend Espresso. Your home for gourmet coffee brewed and handcrafted to perfection. Award-winning beans custom roasted for you. Have you had a raspberry mocha yet? Mm. Blackwater Bend Espresso, not your average drip. While we're on a patriotic theme, I figured we'd continue it. Let's do it a little more locally. Let's focus on Alaskan Constitution. How well do you even know the Alaskan Constitution? Um, I didn't. Don't. Dave hasn't read it. I've never read it until preparing for uh, this program. In fact, last week. Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. They had to pass it so we could find out what's in it. All right. We the people, this is a true or false. Is this the preamble from your Alaskan Constitution? We the people of Alaska, grateful to God and to those who founded our nation and pioneered this great land, in order to secure and transmit to succeeding generations our heritage, political, civil, and religious liberty within the United States, do ordain and establish this Constitution of the State of Alaska. True or false, is that the preamble to your Alaskan Constitution? Send me a text right now, enter to win 299-7653, 299-7653. I don't mean to be melancholy, and I'm really not. I'm actually in quite a patriotic mood. July 4th is, is one of my favorite, absolute favorite times of the year, simply for the fact that, that it's such a reminder of how, how free we are, but at the same time, how delicate it is. It really all hung in the balance. And I know it's a movie. It isn't based on exact events, but The Patriot with Mel Gibson before he went crazy. Uh, what a great movie. What a great reminder to see an epic event like that unfold in a, in a story form and put yourself in that place and put yourself in the shoes of both someone who wanted to protect his family and not expose his children to warfare, but protect ultimately future generations from the tyranny that they were facing. Great, great movie. We, the people of Alaska, grateful to God. Is that the actual beginning to the preamble for the state of Alaskan constitution, true or false? Text now, enter to win 299 Six five three. Just think back to this. Just remember that it was today in 1776, a very innocuous day on the 9th of July, that the Declaration of Independence was read for the first time to General George Washington's troops in New York. Imagine being there. Imagine the feeling that they must have felt. Gosh. I mean, on one respect, I'm glad I wasn't there because I wouldn't be here with you. I'm hopeful that you'll be here for the second half of the show. I promise to make it as spunky, as interesting. We'll uh, continue to take your text messages. And Fred Sturman, I hope to have Fred here. Also, we don't have time to do it right now. I really thought we would in the first part of the program. But I want to get to what we're, what, what's called the miracle on Maddox. It's also part of Take Back Your Town. It's also part of to talk back is to step up. To speak up is to step up. It is to say that what have we come together for as a collective, using that euphemistically, what have we come together for to say, why don't we live in a community and we can provide things, uh, we can pool our monies together and do more with less? If we're going to turn our backs on these three, three homeowners whose homes were filled with sewer, if we're going to turn our backs on them, what's the point? Literally, I'm asking you, <clears throat> excuse me, what, what is the point of living in a community if when the community fills your home with sewage, they don't even step up and say, A, sorry, B, don't worry, we're going to take care of it. And, oh, our insurance company um, is denying coverage? Don't you worry. We'll take care of them. Here's what we can do for you in the moment. If we don't do that as a community, what is the point? I have conversations with friends all the time that are on the other side of this, this issue and say, hey, Chris, you know, we've really got 
communitarianism. I mean, isn't as bad as you're making it out to be. You know, the collective has got to, you know, we have to make decisions that favor the collective and favor the majority and favor the larger community. Chris, there's a larger prize here you're ignoring. No, friend, it's the individual. And here's a great example. If you even approach, if you even begin to approach believing what you just said, then you would hold your community accountable to hold up the individual and prop up the individual in this case and say to, to city manager Walt Reedy and to say to Mayor Beth Wyeth, please intervene on the half, behalf of people like Mike Kennedy and the people whose homes were filled with sewerage. Don't go anywhere. We will expose you to the miracle on Maddox here on Alaska Matters. You're listening to Alaska Matters, the second half of the greatest show on earth. I'm joined by David Webb, engineering the program back up at KGTL. Don't forget, we're on AM 620 and FM 100. On the line with me is Mr. Fred Sturman. He's out of Soldatna and the original sponsor of the most recent term limits initiative that did successfully pass and limit the number of terms that an assemblyman, a Kenai Borough Assemblyman, can, uh, can serve consecutively to two terms and I'll be talking with Fred about the current assembly's attempt to repeal that and overturn what the people want and what the people have voted for. I'm confused. I even asked uh, Assemblyman Wolf last week or the week before when I spoke to him, is that a joke? I mean, are you guys kidding us? Really? I mean, you got to be kidding, right? I mean, nobody in their right mind would would sit on a body and attempt to do this after the against the will of the people. It's got to be some sort of a joke. Well, what's not a joke is your Alaskan mind bender. It's your opportunity to enter. This is the second half of the show. You have another chance, even if you've already entered once, enter twice. It's okay. It's a random drawing. I want to send you to Blackwater Bend Espresso for free. You're home for gourmet coffee. Don't forget, you can also pick up beans there. You can take Blackwater Bend home with you anytime you want. Is this true or false? Is this the preamble to the Constitution of the state of Alaska? We, the people of Alaska, grateful to God and to those who founded our nation and pioneered this great land in order to secure and transmit to succeeding generations our heritage of political, civil, and religious liberty within the United States, within the union of the states, do ordain and establish this constitution of the state of Alaska. Is this the preamble to the Constitution of Alaska? Yes or no? True or false? Text me now, 299-7653. Enter to win. Please welcome to the program Mr. Term Limits himself, almost Borough Mayor, Fred Sturman. How you doing, Fred? Uh, you having a good day? Yeah, I'm having a wonderful day. The sun's just shining, and uh, it's not near as rough as the water was last, yesterday when we were out fishing on the beach. It was Pretty rough yesterday. Yes, sir. Well, you're a trooper. Now, let's talk about this real quick. Um, tell me why, first of all, you felt strongly enough a couple years ago, or, or when it was, why you felt so strong that term limits were were important and something you wanted to see uh, affect the borough assembly. Why did you get started in this, Red? Okay, I want to correct one thing you said. Please. I wasn't the co-sponsor. I was a co-sponsor. Oh, they, uh, uh James Price was the sponsor, and I co-sponsored the term limits with him two years ago, three years ago, whenever we'd done it, and in the time before last, too. You know, so okay. Uh, well, you know, if the the people says we that our term limit is uh, the voters, well, the problem we have is the voters don't vote. Uh, the uh, People, the only people that seem to vote this day and age in a, in a large number and mass is the people that is in government or that is, uh, can be affected by government. Wait a minute. Hold, hold on a second, Fred. Let me make sure I'm tracking with you here. You're saying that, that one, one side of this argument is that term limits are already a natural course of events simply by your ability to vote somebody out of office, and you can limit their number of terms simply by voting for someone else. You're, con you're countering that by saying, well, that's fine and good, but right now we have a pretty low percentage of people to turn out to the polls to vote, and those that do are often actually themselves at the trough, be it through some sort of civic duty or government job or something like that. And your concern is they're going to vote in self-interest that may be contrary to what the people want. Am I, am I following that at all? You, you said it a lot better than I did. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that. So, so 
So, uh, so the people have decided, and we voted on the ballot. Even the people that uh, voted, you know what I mean, uh, that usually vote government, they voted for term limits. You know what I mean? Uh, the yes. people that usually vote, they voted for two-year term limits. On the Kenai Peninsula Borough Assembly. In the Kenai Peninsula Borough Assembly. Now, actually, there was this was about eight or nine years ago, I don't remember what date, the Borough Assembly put it on as a advisory vote, and it passed. But guess what? The Borough would not, the Assembly would not pass the ordinance saying that it got the term limits. Okay, simply for the fact that it was advisory. Okay, we don't have to act, but okay, fine. All right, so then your group, James Price, decides to let's let's put it on the as an actual well, initiative. Yeah, that but that was about, that was about uh, six years ago mm -hmm. or so. We put it on there and it passed. Okay. And at the end of two years, the the law says at the end of two years, the assembly can vote to do away with any initiative. So the people have to go get the signatures again. So we went and got the signatures again, put it on the ballot, and it passed. And now it's time the assembly can, enough time has passed now, and the assembly can now vote to do away with it again. Mm -hmm. So that is a flaw in the law that whenever people pass something, the assembly can just do away with it in two years. In fact, they've done away with, our, with all the initiatives that we've passed on the Kenai Peninsula there's none of them into effect. They've done away with all of them within two years. And the one was one. You know, the one, if you remember right, was the borough can't spend more than a million dollars uh, without going back to the people for any any project that has to be on to a bond for any project on the Kenai Peninsula. It has to go to the people to vote on it. Well, as soon as the two years was up, they done away with it. <laughs> and mm. Now they can. Now they can spend several million dollars without even asking the people. So. Well, uh, Hal Smalley, Assemblyman Smalley, says don't pick on one legislative body because you have issues with someone up here. Um, he's criticizing voter turnout uh, at the last election. Well, uh, is it picking on, I mean, in other words, let's just you and I talk. Let's forget about the, the assembly. Let's forget about the initiative and so forth. Okay. Do you just think it's a good idea that there be term limits, be it at local, state, or federal level? I think it should be everywhere. I agree. Because we have the governor, I mean, the president is on term limits. Yeah. And what more more important than that is, if he's on term limits, I think all the federal employees should be on term limits, too. I haven't heard a single argument, Fred, that is, that except that, well, it limits choice. It limits people's choice. Well, uh, okay, well, then we extrapolate that argument out to, as you just mentioned, the president, and say, well, I don't have a choice to vote for a third term of W, or people don't have a, thir a choice to vote for a third term of, say, Obama administration, whatever it is. I mean, so inherently in our system, we've found at the top, anyway, that it's a good idea to get fresh blood, get people, you know, because otherwise they create a fiefdom. And I, and one of the arguments, Fred, that keeps coming up is people say, well, um, you know, they're just in it for the money or they're, they're career politicians. And these assembly folk are saying, well, ah, come on, we get a stipend. We don't do this for the money. We get a stipend. To which I say, it, it's agenda. They're pushing an agenda in third, fourth, and fifth term. You get that much deeper in, you create your own fiefdom, whatever it is, you're in council or planning or assembly, and all of a sudden your agenda grows strength and power, and that in and of itself can be a form of compensation. You agree? Well, that's, that's true. Plus, the other thing, remember, we have president, uh, the governor of the state of Alaska's term limits and the mayor of the of the Kenai Peninsula Borough is term limited too, so only two terms. Yeah. And then now, Mike, yes, this is Mike's third term. He was elected several years ago for two terms, and he was term limited out, and then he uh, was uh, elected again. Well, th you know, there's nothing to say that they can't stay out one term and then come back and run again. Right. Right, and and that is truly giving people choice. It isn't that you can never run again. That's a great point. And I, I liked what you said at the assembly meeting, and you said, uh, this is your public testimony, you said, put your 100 bucks up and get your 2,000 signatures, and we'll put it on the ballot. <laughs> that is exactly what I think that should be done with any of these term limits. If you want to do away with the term limits, you should have to go collect the signatures like we have to collect the signatures to put the term limits on the ballot. You know what I mean? I do. So, 
the, what's good for the goose should be good for the gander. Is what is. Uh, and I'm telling you, I find it a flaw. I find it as a fundamental flaw to say, well, we want to, you know, people need to take responsibility and go to the polls, and we're chastised constantly by our elected officials. Well, not enough of you are voting. And then at the same time, they turn around and ignore the will of the people once it has been voted into effect. To me, that's counterintuitive. That's, that's exactly right. All right. My guest, Fred Sturman, will be back with more conversation with Fred on the other side of this break here on Alaska Matters. You're listening to Alaska Matters. I'm Christopher Story, your host for Great Adventures in the Last Frontier. We're talking to an adventurer in this frontier, Fred Sturman. And Fred and I have been talking about term limits, and um, I don't know, maybe we've exhausted that, Fred. What about this new initiative that's on the table? James Price was here on uh, my radio realty program a couple weeks back talking about it. Uh, you think it's a good idea? I mean, should we increase the tax exemption for your primary residence from twenty to 50000 I think we should. I think we should because, uh, you know, the it was on the initiative, on a statewide initiative, and the statewide initiative passed, and uh, whatever they did, then the, the the state government passed, the legislators this year passed all the stuff to give the borough assembly the option to give us 50000 but uh, guess what? With their great knowledge and uh, knowing how to spend your money better than you do, they uh, said, no, we want to keep it, and we want to keep – they didn't say this outright. But this, is, this is what I think they said whenever they wouldn't give us the initiative and put an initiative up so it would be – so we went out to get the signatures to give you a $50,000 exemption. All right, let me give you the contrary side of that or the opposite side of this coin. And I don't even need to give it to you. Let me just um, paraphrase what Assemblyman Bill Smith said to the Homer City Council a couple of weeks back. I think it was the, not this last meeting, but the one prior. might have been this last one. Anyway, he said, uh, so if this passes and you, meaning Homer, find yourselves running lean, then you have a couple of options. And he named two. One was to uh, increase the, the mill rate uh, or taxes. And another one was to um, take a close look at senior exemption. And maybe seniors don't get an exemption above and beyond the 300 in the borough, 150 in the city. In other words, increase taxes elsewhere fred that's the complaint that people have got if we give a bigger break to the to ourselves on the primary uh residence exemption they're just going to squeeze it to another end and we're going to pay somewhere else well i'll put it to you this way the other option they got is to cut spending what <laughs> you know i mean but uh, it's you crazy know, uh talk, i've never seen a the uh a, any assembly or any government project uh quit you know want to cut back spending they want to keep spending if you look at the cost of spending going up on the borough and most of the city it's way above inflation so, what, uh, well that's a good point i saw that study come out not long ago and, and let's take another look at something fred you, you bring up reducing expenses all right uh Sullivan smith was talking to the homer city council and the mayor and the city manager when he addressed them and said you can if you find yourself running lean you can increase expenses well, think about it like this. We've got, um, we just got $500,000 from the Endeavor being parked at our deep water dock. That was put into a savings account. We're not going to touch it. We're not going to call that operating uh, capital or income. We're going to call it a windfall, and we're going to tuck it away for a rainy day. The borough's sitting on $100 million that they have invested in various instruments, and it's all for reserve. It's all for that rainy day. And yet, taxes keep creeping up and up and up and expenses going up and up and up. And we spend here in Homer $250,000 on designing, not building, designing a new city hall that the people eventually turn down the initiative for the bond to build it. Well, there's money just wasted. And this list could go on and on and on. Fred, why do you and I see it so clearly and they don't? Because most of the people that is on the assembly, and I'm not I think there is about three or four that is fairly conservative, but the majority of them has never seen a spending bill or spending the money that they didn't love. <laughs> Anytime you want to spend money, but if you want to save money, that is a bad idea. <laughs> bad idea. Fred, um, I appreciate your time today. I appreciate your service to the community. I believe that you uh, not only are... Um, I think you're a smart man, and I think you're doing a good job for the citizens of the peninsula. I appreciated your running uh, and creating quite a contest there uh, for the borough mayoral race. Do you see yourself throwing your hat in again? Well, uh, there is a possibility, but, uh, you know, I'm getting fairly elderly, 
And, uh, you know, I'm kind of like to have a little more fun in my last few years of life. But if it would come to the point where uh, I felt like that I had a good chance of winning and be able to put in some of the ideas and some of the cuts and expenses and uh, changing the borough, the way they spend money and some of the other stuff, I would very well consider uh, giving more of my life to the borough. I'm glad that you're going to remain part of the conversation, Fred. And I guess I would just say this, old people, it's uh, a term limits built right in, huh? <laughs> yeah. All right, Fred Sturman, thanks for your time today, my friend. One, one quick deal. If oh, yeah, go ahead. Homer that would like to help us collect some signatures, uh, get a hold of the borough clerk and get some books and help us collect signatures, we would appreciate it. All right, and he's referring to the exemption on your primary residence from twenty to 50000 That's Mr. Fred Sturman. And you will hear more of what my mom calls the greatest show on earth when we return to Alaska Matters. Hey, welcome back to Alaska Matters. Fred Sturman, great guy. Glad he uh, took a little bit of time out of his busy fishing schedule to be with us. And, yeah, he really is part of the conversation. and made the mayoral race for the KPB quite interesting last year, if you recall. Or, gosh, it's been two years ago already. Yeah. Oh, that's it. I forgot about that. Fred was my very first guest, Fred and Mike Navarre. That was our inaugural program for Alaska Matters. They did a little tete-a-tete, a debate. And yeah, that was interesting. And that was in the overtime election. Remember, it went, it went into overtime that year. That was fun. Um, okay, so what do we got to do here? I want to, all right, yeah, this, the Constitution, let's talk about that for a minute. The Alaska Constitution. Yep, the preamble actually reads as follows. We, the people of Alaska, grateful to God and to those who founded our nation and pioneered this great land in order to secure and transmit to succeeding generations our heritage of political, civil, and religious liberty within the union of states, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the state of of Alaska. Powerful, powerful words. Terry and Mike, you've randomly been selected to be our winners to go to Blackwater Bend Espresso. We'll make sure that they get your names and they'll be waiting for you out there halfway between Homer and Anchor Point. Never leave Homer without it. Not your average drip. Trademark. Copywritten. What a great um, what a great thing to get to know. And I thought we might do that as, as time allows. We'll go through the Alaska Constitution. And I don't mean as time allows today. I mean as time allows going forward. It's, it's a document that, that should be looked at very closely. For example, this is in the uh, Article 1, Declaration of Rights under the Alaska Constitution, Freedom of Speech, Section 5 of Article 1. Every person may freely speak, write, and publish on all subjects being responsible for the abuse of that right. Free speech even built in to our Alaskan Constitution. To step up, to speak up is to step up. Underlining my point. Here's another thought that the, uh, the Borough Assembly might want to take a look at. It's uh, Section 7. It's called Due Process. No person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. The right of all persons to fair and just treatment in the course of legislative and executive le investigation shall not be infringed. Hmm, it sounds so familiar. It all sounds so familiar. I invite you to go to my website. There's uh, something there that's called The Miracle on Maddox. And I'd like you to listen to it. It's all part of Take Back Your Town. Do you want to live in a town that says to a group of people, you know, we've, and, and I want to make this analogy. You, you know how I feel about this. Three homes in mid-January were flooded with sewerage. We need to take responsibility for that as a community. Not you, not the individual employees. I'm not saying that anybody was at fault or that anybody did something wrong. It was an event, a tragic event that maybe was un unforeseen and uncontrollable. It's being declared an act of God, and therefore nobody's responsible. Neither the insurance company, uh, city hall. Nobody's taking responsibility for this, so the, the homeowners are left to go to court. Be this by design or not, I don't care. It's been suggested, well, you know, it might just be the way things have to be handled. You have to go to court so you can get something done with the insurance company. You know what? I want to live in a community where we take responsibility, we shake hands, and we say, look, we're going to take care of this, and don't you worry. We'll, on behalf of the taxpayers, we'll go fight with our insurance company. We're going to take care of you. And I don't mean in a nanny state. I'm talking about we've polluted your home. We've destroyed it. We've ruined it. It may be uninhabitable at this point. We'll take care of you. We clean up our own messes. I, 
I've got to throw this analogy out there. Let's say that this new steamer truck that's being acquisitioned for gl climate change, right? Because there's going to be more ice and snow. So we can just go to our climate action plan here in Homer and justify any expenditure we want. Again, I'm happy we're getting a new steamer truck. I love to see them using it. Trust me, I'm mad and angry only when I see the words climate change involved in any legislation we do at a local level. It's just infuriating. I can't stand it. The point is that when what, uh, two minutes, how can I make this point in two minutes? Let's say that truck's coming down West Hill, all right? And it's icy. It's a big, heavy truck operated by a skilled operator. It's been maintained. It's been maintenanced. It's in good condition. But God has created a weather pattern such that there's ice on the road. And it spins uncontrollably away from the driver's control and slams into your car. Your insurance company says, hey, you go to the municipality. You go to, you go to the city. It's their truck that, that hit you. The police have determined, yep, it, that was the source of the problem, was that truck barely, you know, they, again, didn't do anything wrong. The driver was skilled, did everything he could to avoid the accident, and nevertheless, there was an accident. Is it an act of God, or is there an insurance to step in and take care of the issue? There's got to be, and that's why we have insurance. And that's exactly what uh, Ken Halpin, for example, was told. Well, hey, this is why we've got insurance. You're going to be taken care of. And then when, when the, the rubber met the road, no, not taken care of. Go to AdventureAlaskaRadio.com, AdventureAlaskaRadio.com, and or you can go to my Facebook page. If we're not already friends, uh, send me a friend request. Uh, we'll like each other. It'll happen, and uh, then you can see it there as well. But it'll li link you right back to AdventureAlaskaRadio.com. I want you to listen to that. It's called The Miracle on Maddox, When God Came to Town. We need to clean up after our mess. That's all I'm saying. It's time to take back our town. I want to thank you for participating in the program. I want to thank all of our sponsors. By the way, if you've not had a tie wrap in a while, go out and see Wendell at the Boardwalk Fish and Chips. Tie wrap Tuesday, tie wrap any day. Just say, hey, Wendell, I want a tie wrap. And don't forget the fish on the sticks. Thanks to Darren and the whole crew at the Boardwalk Fish and Chips. For all of us here at Alaska Matters, I'm Chris Story, inviting you to have safe adventures in your own backyard. Where we live, we don't have too many laws.